once again, people, and welcome to yet another episode of Seeking Shamblers. So, um, if you were looking forward to some exciting single-player action or something like that, like we've been doing in the past, well, this one's kind of another little lackluster one. Um, basically, I ran across some Team Fortress maps, and so now we kind of have to cover all the different little random Team Fortress maps that were released around this time. It seems like they were all released to, like, one little... Um, I, I wouldn't say as a pack, but they were released all almost together. They were released all on like the same day of like October 28th of 1996. So needless to say, it's within that period of time. They were all little separate things, but at the same time, they all kind of exist. And they're just little basic maps or whatnot. As said, I've kind of gone through and um, I, I covered pretty much what Team Fortress is last time around with 2-4-2-3. So needless to say, this time around, I'm pretty much just going to cover the level and kind of get out of here. I cut, it was going to cover the last level, but the last level ended up just being basically a duplicate of another level we've already seen. So needless to say, it's been kind of a little bit of a mess when it comes to the Team Fortress stuff. Go love that that one didn't even like take any credit or tell me anything beforehand. You had to like load up the level and happen to recognize that it was like another level that you've seen. Anyway, what are we talking about this time? We're talking about Storm. Yeah, just Storm is the name of the level. They, they really love their simple names. They're going to probably blend it with a bunch of other levels. But luckily, um, each of the levels is also known as Team Fortress 1.3 Storm. You got, uh, you got to really anticipate when uh, they all of a sudden decide to update to 1.4 or whatnot and decide to change all the names of these levels. I wonder if they're going to do that or if it's just going to stay at like 1.3 for most of these. Well, for the time being, these are what the level's names are, is Team Fortress 1.3, blah, blah, blah. And it makes it pretty easy to remember and find and all that. So, anyway, this level is made by John Cook, just like all the other um, Team Fortress levels we've seen thus far. Yeah, it seems like nobody else is really making levels for Team Fortress at this point. It's just John Cook making a bunch of levels. Yeah. Um, anyway... Let's see here. Uh, it, basically, it's a lot of the same stuff we've already seen. Quest, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's an attack defend map designed to be played by two teams. Team 1 has to defend the castle from attack for 10 minutes. Oh, so this is a lot like the last level. The last level, um, which which basically was Fortress, I think it was? Or, f uh, oh god, um, was it Siege actually? Or, yeah, I, I want to say it was Siege. Um, ba basically Siege was basically the same concept whereby you had to like defend for 10 minutes and the other team had to try and get into the base and touch that back wall. And when they touch the back wall, it would give them like so many points. It doesn't end the level for the other team, but it basically gives them so many points that it b allows them to essentially get there and win. Uh, um, because they have such a monumental jump. But that's aside the point. Anyway, as I said, it's attack defense. Um, team 1 has to defend the castle. There's a large button near the gateway, which opens the main gates. Hopefully that's better than last time around, whereby there was like a weird shootable button. It was like a pain to open. Um, anyway, Team 2 has to storm the castle and break through the inner door. There are buttons on either side of the castle, which open the main gates. Once inside, there are six more buttons, which have to be pressed in order to open the inner gates. Team 2 wins once they get a player beyond the inner gates. There's a resupply room inside the castle. Okay, so this one actually has a resupply room. It's a lot more like um the Team Fortress we're kind of used to instead of last time around, which really was just a modified level. And you could even tell it was a modified level because it had a lot of like random ammo still lying around or weapons that would be totally useless in Team Fortress. So needless to say, you could tell that one was heavily um, converted. So if we see a bunch of weapons lying around, it probably is likely that this is a, a, a converted level that the author didn't give credit to the original designer for. But I think that maybe was a rarity and that this one's actually going back to the normal. At least based on the sound of it, because this one has a resupply point. Like I said, the last one did not have that. So, um, let's see here. Um, Storm? Couldn't spawn Storm. Oh, I think it's Storm 1, actually, is the name of the file. Nope. 
No team association associated with info player team spawn. I'm not sure I like that. But um, here we are. Yeah. Okay, so it reminds me a lot of two three four. You can definitely tell it's that same level design mentality as like two three four. But at the same time, it's only one fort, and it's really that tower defense mindset. We're right here's the tower, and that's where you come from. Okay, so let's see here. Um, I'm in one, I guess. Okay, my deathmatch doesn't seem. To... I'm in deathmatch, so why aren't my alliances working? Okay, time to create the physical server and see if that helps. Because I thought I could type in deathmatch and it would. Oh god, what have I done? Apparently, maybe because I typed in here. Oh god, it looks like a plane engine going off! I thought I used this way before to kind of get things working. Huh. Now it seems to not be working, people, when it comes to connecting to deathmatch servers. This, this ain't good. I, I, I got like a weird plane engine sound that doesn't sound good at all. It's a failing plane engine. That's, that's all we needed for Quake. Yeah. I wanted to play Team Fortress instead I get dying plane engine. Let's see here. Maybe maybe actually I was trying to join game. I, I, I don't even know. You guys probably will see in the video post whatever. Post commentary. Let's see here. Let's turn down the audio. Obviously. And change level to Storm 1. Okay, we're actually in Storm 1. Let's do I'm in 1. Okay, now it's actually working. So, we're in one, and I think I'll just be the scout. The scout's the easiest class, really, to explore a level like this, because you get to move so fast. A lot of the other classes um, are either moderate speed or ridiculously slow. Like, imagine trying to check out these levels as a heavy weapons dude. Yeah, no, I, I really wouldn't want to have to do that. The only benefit to those classes might be the fact that they can light up things, like use their rocket launcher, while the scout is kind of limited to a couple flares and that's about it. So anyway, this is the fort that we're defending. We have about 10 minutes and this will basically end on us automatically. But as you see, here's like a little fort with a bunch of fancy buttons. They weren't kidding when they said there's a bunch of buttons, didn't they? But yeah, here's the resupply point. You can like get ammo in this little station here. Simple enough. And we have to hit the switches to open. Wait, or is this way the way we want to open? I think I just doomed our team because I just pressed buttons since I'm trying to get out of the fort. Mm. I'm trying to figure out the button to get out of this fort and I think I'm dooming you all. There's too many buttons. Um, wait. Oh, there we are. Get disoriented but yeah here's the fort here's where you leave now we're outside and yeah that's basically the mentality here there's really not a lot to do as the defending team we might as well actually reset and go as the offense team i'm in two okay so now we're in team two we're actually able to see how this fort works and how we like break into it as said, there's no other guns there's no other things lying around so really it's just a matter of seeing how we break into this fort so you see there's the buttons on the side you want to like come over here and come over here and then you open it up basically you press these two buttons and then you quickly rush through here okay so now we're inside and this big button here is obviously the one that leads in and out it's bigger than the other buttons and thus is the, the doorway to this whole thing so that's that one here is the resupply point you can get it as the opposite team as you see so you can come in here, try and control the area, steal their ammo, be a jerk, you know, all nine yards. And there's the door. There, We now need to press, I think, six buttons and we needed to get it to open. So, there are more to go. That's one button. There's another button. How many more buttons? Where, where, where are the buttons? I need more buttons. Okay, button number three. We have three more to go. Where are the other buttons? We can do this. We're playing Button Hunting, hunting Simulator 9000, people. This is what Quake is all about! Finding the hidden buttons! Oh yeah! We know how much we love this! Okay, we, we have two buttons. I don't know where they are. Oh, only one button, people! Only one button! 
and then we can get this door open. Where's that last button? Is it this? No. Oh, okay. So yeah, basically you need to press like two halves of like the button. That's a weird design, but yeah, you need to like press both of them for it to open. I guess it's because the other side needs two buttons to open or whatnot, but here's the last button. You press this. And now we slowly open this door. Very, very slowly. Look at how slowly this door is open. We gotta like just control this area while this door slowly, gradually opens. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that slow door. We're almost there. We just have another year to go. At this way, I'm worried the 10 minutes are gonna be up before the door opens. Open sesame! Open sesame! Okay, door seems to be open. Yep, now I can actually get underneath. I'm perfectly fine. That seems to be an exit corridor. I wonder if the level's gonna end this time when I go in there. Like I said, the last level didn't end when I walked in there, so I can't imagine this one ending by just walking into it, but who knows? This level isn't the last level, and the rules seem to change constantly with levels like this. Um. Yeah. This thing's almost up in there. We are. Let's, let's go in here and exit the level, I guess. Team 2 wins! Go, Team 2! Go, Team 2! We are awesome! Go, Team 2! Yeah! Okay, so that is how we win the level. And kick the butt of Team 1, who, as you see, didn't even try. But that's beside the point. With that in mind, that in mind. Like I said, there's not really a lot going on here. It's another little um, deathmatch level, but it is at least a little variant to our normal deathmatch level, which we've seen way, way too many of at this point. Um, having some little variety in the deathmatch scene is definitely welcome. Um, and we haven't seen too, too many Team Fortress levels, so that's kind of good. And if you're talking about levels where it's Defend the Floor, I think this is really the only level I've been able to even record. Like I said, the last one was basically just a redux of a level we already had, so... Needless to say, it really wasn't the best to record. Plus, it wasn't the best in terms of, um, functionality anyway. As I said, if you touch the back wall of that one, the level doesn't really end, it's just... Um, you get a big point score, and that's basically it. This one, if anyone makes it through and basically gets all the buttons, the level ends. Plus, it's a lot more logical because there's none of the random guns lying around and all that that really shouldn't be around the Team Fortress. So yeah, needless to say, a lot better of an experience than the last level was, um, Siege. Which you guys didn't see, so I, it's kind of... You're probably just sitting there wondering, What in God's name am I talking about? Yeah, you gotta watch the post-commentary for that one! Um, anyway, there's really, like I said, not a lot here. It's just a little deathmatch map, as always, so... Yeah. Hopefully we get back to single-player levels. I, I'm already missing them. I know I always, uh, always end up saying that, but yeah, basically, the, really the good stuff for Quake is really just all the single-player levels, and everything else is kind of just the historical value, if you will, of it. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of random levels that kind of exist, and really we can't do a lot with, because, you know, you need friends to really play with, and, you know... Who in their right mind is going to play 1996 random shovelware levels with you? Yeah, that's kind of the problem. Um, as said, that is kind of why a lot of these deathmatch levels sadly are kind of useless in today's day and age. Um, while single player levels at least have practicality no matter what, because someone like us can always load them up and end up playing them after 20 plus years. But, yeah, um, at the time, multiplayer was the craze, it was the big thing, and so it makes sense that a lot of people were making multiplayer levels, and that, that was the big priority of Quake at the time. Um, and who knows, maybe one day, someone somewhere will actually get the motivation to play this thing. Plus, you can always play with bots, so I guess there it's not fully... Um, but bots are kind of boring, honestly, to play with. It doesn't have the same atmosphere of, like, an actual deathmatch, because with an actual deathmatch, you have, like, people talking to each other. It's the whole experience of, like, um, really kind of getting into the whole community thing and really having fun that way. When it's just the monotonous respawning, killing over and over and over, it gets a lot more dull. 
Yeah, so that's needless to say kind of the problem and why bot matches really aren't that exciting. They're good for practice um, for deathmatch, but they aren't the real thing. And they also aren't really a single player experience. They're just kind of, as said, a thing intended usually to work to get better and just kind of practice your skills. But not something you're going to be using a long period of time, at least not in most cases, at least not in my case. Um, and my case is the only one that obviously matters. Anyway, I've been talking a lot of really irrelevant stuff about this level. Um, but yeah, really is that it's nice to check out something that's a little bit different than your normal deathmatch level. Even if it's not really that that useful. Um, at least it provides some little minor variation on the concept. So, with that in mind, that in mind, thank you all for watching as usual, people. It has been an adventure, and I shall see you all, well, next time.